السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ برکاتہ گریٹنگس ٹو آل آف یو ٹو بی آنسٹ آئی ووڈ نیور ایکسپیکٹیڈ دیٹ دس ہیوج کراؤڈ ووڈ کم ان ٹو لسن ٹو سم تھنگ وچ ہیز بین ٹولڈ کوائٹ آفٹن ان دا سینس ٹائم مینجمنٹ مینیجنگ آف ٹائم دس ٹاپک ہیز بین ڈن ٹو ڈیتھ پیپل ہیو بین ٹاکنگ فار اٹ فار اباؤٹ اٹ فار ایجز Articles have been written, PowerPoints have been presented. What, what we would try to do today is in a very concise and precise manner. And I'm, that's the reason why I'm really grateful to all of you who are present here. You have taken out your time and this itself shows that you are using your time in the proper sense. The aspect I would like to hit on is to begin with the Quran. You see, Surah Al-Asr, Wal-Asr, Wal-Asr, Inna Linsana Lafi Qusr. There's the first ayah. Illa lazeen amanu wa amilu salihati, tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabr. That's the later part. Let's focus on the first ayah itself. That tells you about time. Allah Tabaruk Ta'ala, for us as Muslims, For us, as human beings, every word in the Qur'an it has its own importance and emphasis. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever He wants to be more emphatic about certain things, He goes, He swears, He says, by time, wal asr, by time, the reality is that indeed, Mankind is at a loss. This first ayah of Surat Al-Asr carries a lot of meaning. What loss is Allah talking about? The subsequent that you, you know, we, we have to be with each other in a very positive manner and so on. But this first ayah itself speaks volumes about time. Allah Tabaruk Ta'ala is saying, man is at a loss. What about loss? What loss is he talking about? The loss he is talking about is that every human being, the date of birth and the date of death, the day he is going to be born and the day he is going to die, these are finite values. There are the finite values. These are set. set carved in stone and only Allah Ta'ala has the knowledge of it and time keeps passing by. So what are the attributes of time? First of all, time is irreversible, absolutely irreversible. Time is temporary. There's no compensation for it. What I'm going to say now or what I say now within next 10 nanoseconds It becomes a thing of, thing of past. In other words, time is irreversible. It's uncertain. You're not sure you're sleeping, going to sleep tonight. Will you be able to wake up tomorrow morning? You're not sure that you have got up in the morning. Will you be survive? You'll survive the whole day. I'm not saying be a pessimist. I'm not saying to be negative. I'm saying to start understanding the attributes of time. Time once lost. can never come back. And there is no trial and error in time. There's no trial and error. Okay, today I couldn't do it. Uh, possibly today will never come again. Tomorrow will be another day. The day after tomorrow will be another day. So time will never, is not a trial. It is uncertain. It's like ice. You see, time is like ice. Every moment the ice keeps melting. And that's the reason why the attributes of time are very important. There's a Sahih Hadith, Bhadis Bukhari. There are two blessings which many people lose. Are Baches, one 
is health and second is free time for doing good. Huzur Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that losing your time for doing good in the sense you have the time where you can do some good and you cannot do that is you have not spent your time positively you have not spent your time properly then you are at a loss it's a very old saying time and tide wait for no man a person who masters his time masters his life trust me it's easy to say but it's actually the fact of life a person who masters his time masters his life what is stress what is anxiety why we get depressed why are you so stressed only because we mismanage time mismanagement of time gives you a lot of stress recognize time wasters you should start introspecting and recognizing what is that which wastes your time and lastly disconnect time in a second segment we are going to talk about what means what it means by disconnection of time or disconnect time sometimes you have to disconnect yourself and how it will be, it can be done and what are the repercussions what are the benefits we'll talk about in a second segment there's another hadith huzur akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and this is tirmizi grasp five things before five others your youth before your old age your health before your illness your riches before your poverty your leisure before your work and finally your life before your death grasp your life before your death grasping your life and how what does grasping means it means managing your time properly managing managing your time which will be useful managing your time in a way i'm not saying don't enjoy yourself i'm not saying don't amuse yourself i'm not saying don't have leisure it's all there as long as you are focused on using your time in the proper manner it's a very old age concept and it's true and it's applicable even management gurus have identified this time you divide your time your task your work into four quadrants four quadrants number 1 things which are important and urgent important and urgent number 2 important but not urgent number 3 not important but urgent and number 4 not important and not urgent now if i ask you among these four which would be the most best quadrant you have to be in whether it should be important and urgent whether it should be important not urgent or it should be not important but urgent and not important not urgent and i'm sure obviously it would appear that important and urgent is the task which you have to attend immediately this is why you have to spend your time on but that's wrong you see important and urgent why did you put off a thing which you need to do in time you did not do and hence what it has what has become it has now become urgent had you done at that important task in time it would have been important but not urgent if you look at this quadrant of important and urgent it is stressful it is full of anxiety it results in procrastination is a result of post procrastination now what is procrastination you see you have a thing to do you have a task to do and you look at it and then you say okay i will do it tomorrow so you what you're doing is you're procrastinating and as edward gay said that the biggest thief of time is procrastination edward gay biggest 
thief of time. Which is what we do is, we do not give urgency, we do not give importance to what we have prioritizing. So, this quadrant also is, it is an emergency. So, if you try to do things in an emergency, you are prone to commit mistakes. And hence, try to avoid in the quadrant of being important and urgent. Do your task in time so it doesn't remain urgent. It is important. The second is not important but urgent. Some popular activity. Now, for example, you are in a meeting and your wife calls. The phone is ringing. The meeting is there. People are sitting around. You have no alternative but to pick up the phone. So, it, that, those kind of tasks are called as important but not important but urgent. Twitter, WhatsApp, you are talking to someone, I have noticed a lot of people, you are talking to someone and they get a message and their eyes goes down looking at the mobile phone. Now this is not important. But it's urgent because something has happened, a tweet and then there you go. So again that quadrant, try and avoid that. The fourth quadrant, not important, not urgent, you see excessive of social media. Excessive social media. Uh, every two minutes you have messages, every two minutes you are looking at your phone, you are going on for Facebook and what have you. Surfing the net, you sit on the net, you sit on the net for a purpose. Again, let me reiterate, let me say, I am not against technology. I am a huge user of technology myself. I use the mobile phone, I use the laptop, but then there is a limit to what you could do. There's a limit to what you should do. There's a limit of what you should, how you should utilize your time. So those things which are not important, not urgent. For example, uh, your communication with your creator. You see, you're going into a mosque. You're going for your prayers. It's time, the call is already made. You're climbing the stairs of the mosque. All of a sudden, a message comes on WhatsApp or Twitter. The message might be very disturbing. The message might be about a tragedy, a natural calamity, an accident or whatever. And what you do is, instead of ignoring at that point of time, you look at it. And then you enter the mosque, put your mobile in the pocket. And you are now communicating with your creator. You are communicating with Allah. What happens is, this disturbance in between, this message which came in between is at the back of your mind. Whether you like it or you don't, I'm not saying, maybe there are some of you in the audience here who are very focused. Once you enter the uh, 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 mosque, you disconnect yourself and you're totally focused. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you're muttaqi. I'm sure your taqwa is so strong. But a majority of us, people like me, majority of us, Am I from disturbed by something which just came in when I'm going for my prayer? Trust me, that is going to affect my communication with my creator. So the best place, with the best quadrant to be is that you have to do things which are important but not urgent. Important but not urgent. You should be in that quadrant. How do we do that? You do that by prioritizing your work, doing it in time, so it doesn't become urgent at all. The margin of error, the margin of, margin of committing mistakes, the margin of doing things wrong during an emergency, during an urgent task, are minimized because you have done the job in time. So what needs to be done is to prioritize. Prioritize what you are doing. Set goals. Now, this might sound quite heavy. Oh, set goals, management, and we're not talking about those kind of goals. We're not talking, we are not sitting here. I'm not doing a corporate training here. We are talking about you and me. We are talking about common people, common human beings. Setting goals, you small goals. You should set your goals so that you move towards that. You need to have a priority. Okay, I will look at my mobile only twice as far as WhatsApp is concerned, once in an hour or once in two hours. 
there's no necessity I should every time it clicks I have to see so there are certain things which you have to set for yourself certain goals you have to set so your goal should be smart S M A R T S specific you need to be very clear don't be just generalized then I'm, I'm going to do this from tomorrow no you have to be very specific what your goal is I'm not talking about goal just a life goal for tomorrow goal for the next, the next hour goal, goal for the next week so you need to have a priority so you should the goal should be specific M is a goal which you set for yourself should be measurable you should be able to measure the goal which you have set for yourself if there's no measure then what would happen is you'll take it lightly and then a goal which you set for yourself should be achievable attainable you should know your limitations you should know I can do this go this far not more further so there should be certain achievability certain attainability in the goals you set and then it should be realistic of course and finally T is for time bound don't put off things for ages together there should be a time okay I will complete this task in such and such time I will do this and it should be more specific realistic so this is smart time management is simply achieving planned goals within a time frame that's what time management is all about so avoid time wasters that is very important not many people when they talk about time management talk about time wasters they will talk time wasters is procrastination fine I'll tell you what is time waster your ego is a time waster when you started thinking about yourself you think that you're indispensable your ego hurts you go on an ego trip you start sulking that means you're wasting time lack of discipline lack of focus these things do matter those are time wasters if you don't focus on what you're trying to do it will waste your time and then another thing is and it is very common in our community uh, and when I say community I'm a part of it I'm not saying your community I'm saying our community including myself is taking criticism from people too personally so self-importance someone has talked something about you and you think about you discuss with people you tell you know what such a system you're wasting your time don't take it so seriously you try your time is much more useful than on wasting your time on trivial matters unnecessary social events and media trust me these are big time wasters unnecessary social I'm not saying do not go for social events yes you are a part we are homo sapiens we are an integral part of this community this country this world we are global citizens primarily that is right so I'm not saying that you become antisocial no social events but those social events where your time is, is just for no reason you're just sitting there I mean that's happening trust me from the place I come from unfortunate as it may seem every nikah card says nikah bad maghrib or nikah bad isha but the bridegroom will come at 10 10 30 in the night and food will be served at 11 30 12 o'clock in the night if this is not a time waster what is it so we have stopped the importance of time we talk about dowries we talk about all other things what we don't talk and we should be talking is our community is a lot of time spenders time wasters I am reminded of Ibn Jawzi Ibn al Jawzi he was born in 1292 and died somewhere around 1350 almost 800 years back 800 or 900 years back almost 10 centuries we are talking about 9 centuries back Ibn al Jawzi, a scholar, had written 1000 books. And I was going through Maulana Google the other day and uh, I came across Ibn al Jawzi, that a scholar, 10,000 10, books. 1000 books. But one thing I found a statement which he made, and this is very interesting. I felt as if he was talking about today, he was talking about yesterday. 
he says i feel sorry for those people who are busy in amusement roaming on the streets sitting in cafeterias without specific purpose what is he talking about he is talking about today 900 years back so i am feel sorry for the people who are busy in amusement roaming the streets without specific purpose sitting in a marketplace hotel wherever and staring at passers by and then debating and giving opinions on the rise and fall of nations giving opinions about politics giving opinion about religion without without serving any purpose so he says he feels sorry for those people who spend the time i am not saying no do not debate i am not saying do not have discussions what i am saying is meaningless wasting of time four friends gather together order two by four uh, tea chai half a cup each and they are sitting there endlessly talking about nothing very trivial matters now this is a waste of time these are time wasters and you need to manage time prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace be upon him he forbade qil and qal which is idle useless talk which another word other words is idle and useless pursuits which are the biggest time wasters gentlemen time management is nothing new time management has been there since time immemorial now it is us grasp your life before death that is grasp your time before death thank you you have been a patient audience and i'm sure you all will after the small tea break we'll have a segment 2 in which we'll talk about time disconnect we'll take this a little bit further thank you very much and you have been a splendid audience peace be upon you thank you